What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. I'm pumped. Who's excited? Who is ready to kick this week off? Give me one second. I'm sending a link out to everybody in both my mentorship chat and uh, free chat. Let me alert everybody. Everyone else that got the YouTube notification, shout out for hitting that subscribe button and turning that little bell on. You guys already know when that thumbnail is up, the futures are red. I like that thumbnail. I'm just going to keep it. Sunday Stock Talk. Futures headed down. Uh, the only one I swung short over the weekend, and give me one second while everybody gets logged in here. I did swing a futures contract short. It is the Russell. It is this particular contract right here. The other two were in a zone. Uh, and while I was short, so I'm, I'm in SQQQ and LABD, uh, you know, that's fine. As far as futures go, you know, yesterday we were just, we were right here. So I wasn't full blown short until we broke that zone. But if we look at the the Russell, it was just a lot weaker. We're kind of there in that mid spot. So uh, I did swing a contract short. So I'm going to put my stop in the green, let it play out while we are uh, talking. So I'm actually going to put my stop at 1972.30, and we're good. Uh, if you guys don't know how to do that, get Trade Station because there's a line on your chart. You just click, drag, let go, and that's about as easy it is to modify an order. Stop is in the green. Everything's ready to roll. Oh, we got to hurry. So yesterday's video uh, was a miracle that it got out. It was on my other uh, YouTube account where we talked about the stock market expected move. Uh, we're having some crazy weather, and I don't know if there is a... I think there's a power line that, that's messed up or has a bad connection because the power's been like intermittent. And when there's crazy wind, it cuts out for a few minutes, a couple, almost like a minute, and it comes back on. Um, and I can hear the hail right now. So let's get going. Let's talk about the futures. And, uh, after that, if we're still here, I'm going to turn it over to you guys, uh, and answer some questions, uh, break down tickers. I'm a price action trader. I wish I could make just one video and make you guys super traders. That's just not how it works. Um, so I like to answer your questions and, uh, let's get rocking. My trade station web trading is not working. Uh, I've only ever used the mobile app. Well, I used well, I, I've used my desktop before. I, don't, I can't remember the last time I used uh, the web. Desktop app is good though. I'll leave a Mac at home. What you need to do is make sure when an order fills, it's just some deep man's voice saying "order filled," uh, and then leave that on, and then leave like a limit order. Leave your speakers up loud. So it's at three a.m. You hear a man saying "order filled." Uh, that'll get, really get you to sleep at night. When is the button you think on PayPal? The button? So let's look at it right now. Uh, let's kick it off with the dollar. Ooh, we're, are we still in our Forex play? We were short the British pound US dollar. I think that tagged out on Friday. I know one of the orders did, but as things go, I add to them. Uh, and I think they did. Dang it. Um, so we were short this. That did tag. How stupid. Uh, we're gonna short this again just a tad bit more uh, if you followed me on that uh, not followed me because I don't give call outs but if you agreed we took that play live on YouTube uh, and it ended up being four thousand dollars if you just did I did two lots yeah anyway I don't give call outs but if you pay attention and you agree maybe you like some of these plays All right, so my stop loss now is gonna be just right where my mouse is at right now. We either uh, we're going for it or, or we're not. So it's gonna be 35 pips away. We're gonna submit that, and we are filled. We're good. Uh, all right, let's go over to the Russell right now. So we're approaching this zone right here. Now we've been horizontal for a while. So overall, I'm still short. We're still we're still trending down. You guys know I'm I'm literally just put my stop in the green on on a contract that I swung overnight. We're still short. Uh, again, this is a futures contract, so the market for me is open. Uh, this is also how I trade oil and everything. Um, you know, I, I see somebody asked about an oil ETF, which uh, which you literally just deleted. So, post that back up there. I was gonna answer that question. Uh, but I want to see if there's any buyers left over here. Mm. As far as this goes, if I'm awake at the time, I'll probably have a buy order right here for a quick scalp. 
Uh, now this has been like the main zone, but we've gotten carried away a couple times. Like we just ran down. Now some buyers did pick it up. This is still a zone. Like it's still something to pay attention to. That's where ultimately they came in, which is why I deleted everything off the chart. We're only focused here and here. A daily close below, not going to be a good sign. So I might try to do that. Might be worth a, a quick scalp in the futures market. I'll grab a couple contracts if it pops up. Put my stop in the green. Right, it either continues up, we go back in that zone, we hold, we push up here. That would be best case scenario. Or it tags out and make a couple bucks. I go back short and we head on back down. Spy to 420 is not a meme, right? <laughs> So you tagged out immediately, get back in, so you don't care where or what. Just give, uh, just get in, give it time, or you tag out. It sounds a lot harder to do. It sounds a lot harder to do than than say. Uh, yeah, okay. So guys, when let's say I, I bought this right here. Uh, let's say my stop was below this wick. I bought this. Pow! Uh, I get in, it tags out. Now I've, I'll buy a bright red candle. It doesn't mess with me at all everyone you got to stay in your lane if you're about that dip by and catching that knife that is you if you're about like the let's wait for the reversal some people call it a confirmation uh then then stay in your lane because how that mentally affects you you get in there trying to play what i'm doing and then it just you're just distraught and all of a sudden your next five trades suck uh but how personally i do things is uh let's say i would have got in here now this is how this trade would have panned out where's that button here we go so long position. Now this is before this green candle shows up. I'm thinking I'll put my stop below that wick. Boom. We'll call it the horizontal play. Now this tagged out. Okay. I see it down here. Sure. Whatever. It's a good play. Now I see it back up here. Then I, okay, that was a wick. The zone is holding. Everything's looking good. I get back in, right? When I tag out, that is just an alert. All I'm doing is looking at it like, Hey, didn't, you know, I'm out. That's cool. Cause I'd rather like, Imagine just setting an alert and then watching this bright red candle. Like, that would suck. I'd rather just stop out, get back in when I see it's all the same versus, uh, you know, I don't want to stop out. You know, someone, they always, like, and I don't mean to mock that, but I hear it in, in my head, that is silly. Um, people don't want to stop out. This had a mental stop loss, something dumb. By the time they get to it, they are so far beyond their stop point. It's ridiculous. I've been caught in waterfalls. It only has to happen once for me to not ever want to do it again. Right? I don't like losing money. Like To me, that's ridiculous. People watching their money just go down. Uh, like I fall out of my chair when I just hear these comments. Like, well, I'm still in. What do I do? First of all, get the F out. Like, what, You just like watching your money dwindle away? Is that fun for you? It, it's not for me. My, my bills come every month, so I have to have money every month. Uh... So, when you guys hear me say I'll take two losses on a trade, that's exactly what I'm talking about. This trade would have panned out. Would have been just fine. I would have got back in. Now, here's where some people get really hung up. And I'm telling you guys, like, you can hear it in my voice. Like, I don't care about the 45 cents. Let's just say this was, we'll call it Tesla. Everybody knows Tesla. Let's say this was uh, $800 stop, okay? Uh, let's say you bought it eight hundred dollars. Now it tagged out down here. Now it's at eight oh one, and you're like, okay, it's a wick. Oh, but that's more than what I paid for it. That's that's silly. Okay, that we're just we just don't do that. Okay, it's not silly. That trade tagged out. It alerted you. You you now know like there is potential of that not working out. Uh, so does the trade still make sense? If the answer is yes, then I buy it right back. I get right back in. Hey, looks like it's holding. Now, when I get back in, I will adjust my stop. Like, hey, we've already done that once. I'll give it that much wiggle room, and we'll we'll call it good. Now, if that tags out, that's my second trade. I'm not looking to beat my head against the wall a thousand times, right? Like, clearly, it's not working out, so I'm out. And uh, another reason I don't ever know if it turned around is I don't sit and stare at the what could have happened. Like, let, I take this trade, and there's a wick right. Let's say it even wicks again one more time right to here, and then it blasts off to $20,000. I would have never known. I would have never cared because I don't just sit there and look like, was that the right move? I have better things to do with my time. Like I'm already on to the next trade. I'm already on to, to everything else. Wash sale. Yeah. Well, I'm a trader, so I don't have like people worrying about wash sales. Like, are you an investor or, or a trader? Because uh, you got to pay taxes. That that happens. Uh, so talk to a CPA. Like a lot of people talk about this wash sale. I think they're. I know a lot of investors like to go on YouTube and talk about it. Well, I don't get in because of this and that. But like, well, are you a trader or an investor? Because there is a huge difference. One of them can get back in. The other one, you probably do need to worry about that. And you're probably also not trading or following me. Uh, 
So do you buy the same amount of shares or less because you'd be risking more capital than 1% at that point? If I move my stop down, it's a little bit less. Every trade, entry, stop loss, how much do I want to risk? How many shares can I fit in there? I'm not revenge trading. I'm not trying to pile on more to make up for what already happened. Like I'm just, does the trade make sense? Yes, I take it. I buy when it makes sense. I sell when it makes sense. That's it. Whether it's five seconds after I just got out of the trade or, or five years. Actually, I'm mostly an investor now, <laughs> but I'm getting into trading thanks to you. Oh, okay. You're mostly an investor. Now. When you when I read that, I thought you meant like you're mostly an investor now because you were a trader and now you're just bag holding. It's not a thing, guys. Bag holding is when you know you were going to be a trader. You were going to take this trade and then not get in it. And you're like, oh. Like me and Facebook in my investment account is not bag holding. I'm watching it go down. Same with PayPal. It's just dwindling away and it. It's weird, especially being a trader. In my trading account, I would have never let that happen. All right, as far as the cues go. Uh, so right now, if you're bullish, we've seen this happen before. We get like, was it last week? We had just a bright red open, and then it the, the zone held. Uh, it was this right here, actually, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it was red. That zone held, pushed up. Right, called it, called it good. Uh, this could still have. There's still a lot of time to uh, for this to be green in the morning. If you're bullish, I don't know if I'd, I'd get my hopes up. Uh, but also, if I'm bearish, you know, I'm not popping any bottles. Uh, remember, we ended Friday right here at that zone. So it's a zone until not. We're just now breaking it. Now, there's about me and 11 other people trading these these micros right now. So there's, there's not a whole lot uh, of conviction inside these sell-offs. Now, when we see a... A candle like this, when we see just bright red and going on that or just further and further, that will drive fear and panic, and people will be quick to sell. That's when you get the uh, just the, the slingshot, like we're headed south, you know, that, like, that's just going to trigger a lot of people. Right now, we could find that dip here in an hour. We could already be up by the time this stream is done. That could even be a green candle, or we could be at that next bottom yellow zone. <clears throat> Just want to say thanks. Open up my trade station account and made eleven hundred dollars, uh, one thousand one hundred seventy nine Friday. Following your rules, and I can say it's a game changer. Thank you, thank you, and to anybody that's new here, if you ever want to know how I do things, ask the people in my chat. These are live for a reason. Uh, ask the people that are in your shoes. Do you remember A, a V C T? I'm still holding it. Oh my god, I remember that because I think I remember. Saying what the f? Okay, yeah. Why are you still holding that? Now, if you're new to me and and you see someone come on and I just start to blast them, I'm, I'm it's because I care about you guys. The only reason I am here is to help you guys. But if you're if if your stock goes from the, if you look at the chart, and it goes from the top left to the lower right. I'm just gonna start saying, what are you doing? Like, are, are you kidding me? Why was this? There's over seven thousand tickers. Right? Why was this the one? Now, of those 7,000 we have on the market right now, there's been over 100,000 that they're just not here anymore. So, what are the odds that's the next one or this is the next Amazon? Like, I know those are the extremes, but why? Because I'm a little slow. <laughs> Now, I, I can roast him because he's been here for a while. If you've been here for a while, I am a little bit harder on you. So, if you are new, take that with a grain of salt. I have to at least know what you're trading. Jeez, look at all these zones. Uh, I don't like looking at that many. Like, that's ridiculous. We'll worry about these when we get up there. It's a weekly zone. We're going to keep that. No one cares about that. Might be some buyers there. We'll worry about that when we get there. Um, let's get rid of that for now. All right. Let's worry about what's important. Um... We'll look for some there. This is a yellow zone. Um, yeah, for right now, so this is the S&P. And right now, that, that could be a wick. Now, when I see it, so here's a wick before. This is a bigger candle. This was bright red at one point. It did turn around, and we bounced that zone held. We could still see literally just this. And here's your main bulk of trading. Here's your here's where your big orders get put in. Here's where the strays get out. Uh, you know, tr traditional supply and demand, they probably have their zones looking like this. Uh, you're talking about zone freshness, you know, here's, you know, yeah, kind of. I found there's no additional accuracy, consistency, anything. So I like to get where the main game of tug of war is being played, the main area of attention, and then I use these wicks to play stop losses. Uh, so if I was looking to buy the dip, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't want to break in just that, that previous wick. 
Uh, and if I'm long over the weekend, you know, this isn't the best look. Uh, but neither was it last Sunday. And then we turned around. Uh, but I can't say if we're up in the morning and we're below this zone, I'm still a complete short. Uh, I'm just going to sell everything. I'm not a perma bear or a perma bull. I have a directional bias. I have an income bias. Uh, I'm just going to play whichever way it's headed. And, and then that's it. So it's tough love, but still love and 100% necessary. Dom won't BS you. I really won't. I have no time for that. The the pretend game or hyping things up. Uh, let's see. If you put 25k in an account to day trade, are you required to maintain a 25k balance? Yes. Uh, which which messes a lot of people up because they'll put 25k in there and then all of a sudden they are super traders. They're in there in and out. They're like they're they think they're in the ring with uh, uh, Pacquiao. They're going to town. Uh, and what that does is right. They got 52 day trades, and, and that's fine. Um, and then their account drops to 24.9, and they have 52 day trades on there. That's well past your three. You can't go past that that 25k mark unless you're under um, the, uh, the the three day trades in a rolling five days. <clears throat> so, uh, what I've seen a lot of people do. I, and this has happened with me a lot. I've helped, at this point, literally thousands of people in the market. And I've seen a lot of people grow their account from 3000 to 25000 And then they cross that line, and they forget everything that ever got them there. All of a sudden, they got the VWAP up. They're on the 30-second chart. They're, they're just, let's just do it. And then they're right back below, and they're in trouble. And then they're on a 90-day suspension. Uh, you know, you need to have that cushion in there. What I've recommended well i don't give recommendations let's say uh for am I, as a dad am i allowed to give my daughter recommendations yeah everyone else can kick rocks i'm gonna tell her to take that i'm gonna say 30 grand and put it in a stock like the s p or target she likes going to target collect a dividend uh what's another one ford apple i'd say put the 30k in there that way, you got 5K worth of uh, adjustments, but that's in there. And then all the other money you put on top of that, if you have 31,000, you get to day trade with 1,000. But that 30,000's got your PDT locked in. It keeps you away from that trouble and that mess. Yeah, three day trades in only five days. Swing trades are fine, though. Yeah, of course. Uh,. Put 30k into intel <laughs> okay i do have to so if you guys are a, a youtube member you click the the join button next to subscribe uh i go i ask you guys on thursday what tickers you want me to break down on saturday i go over them saturday i started the stream uh, and i just kept every time i would just lose power and i'm just like so I, I do have to finish up there real quick i'm wearing flip-flops does that count <laughs> no but what's up do you think we're going below 13k on the Nasdaq? Yeah. Uh, I mean, why? Why not? Now this was crash territory. Like we hit, we actually crashed. Like all this was correction. This was a crash, and then we bounced back up. And we're probably gonna do that again. Uh, or, or this holds, and then we go to the moon, and that was the bottom. So what would make me think this is the bottom? And you, almost your argument could have been made right here. Okay. Uh, we held, we go sideways. So right now, guys, uh, I don't think this is now, by the way. And I said this even back then. Uh, but one day the bottom will be here. Okay. This year, next year, who knows? There's a lot of things the market's doing we've never seen before. Right. So I don't care about 2008. I don't care about 2000. I don't care about any of the previous years. I don't care about tulips. I don't care about anything. If that's not clear, double tap the screen on the left side so it can rewind on YouTube. And you can hear that again until you can comprehend it and make sense. All I care about, like, the reason I say all that is because we might just be bearish for the next five years. Who knows? But what we'll probably do is we'll hold right here. It'll look like a support, is what you'll probably call it. Uh, support. Could be one bounce, could be two, could be four like this. We'll push up, we'll pull back, we'll make the higher low. Now your case is made, like, the second we do this, was that a higher low? Right now we're making lower lows, lower highs. That's how simple that is. We're headed down. There's more red candles than green. 
Once we stop and we make that higher low, you're then looking for the higher high. That's your confirmation. If you're going to speculate, then you get in, you put your stop loss right below it, uh, and then if we just soar up, then then we're good to go. You know, you, you, you caught it. There you, there you have it. But you need these green candles to get above at least that previous high. At that point, we, we've changed the trend. Other, other than that, we've just continued to make lower highs. So we might do the same thing here. We might just push up. We might just bounce off that. We might just create a nice little bear flag right there and then come right on down. You know, there's, there's only a certain amount of things that the market can do. Uh, I would just stay until that trend changes. Uh, and it, I've been very profitable, very successful by doing this. I just go with the flow. And right now it's down. I don't trade the, the charts that I want. I trade the charts that I have. I don't care about anyone's emotion, emotional attachment to it. Uh, it's just we're headed south. That's sweet. So am I. Uh, all I care about is the movement. I can All I can stress is that you guys do the same thing. Like, quit try, quit worrying about the knife. Like, I'll probably try to time the bottom and I'll buy it. I'll, it'll be more of a coincidentally right than, I, than it will be I actually knew that was the bottom. But we'll jump into a, a zone. I'll buy it. I'll put my stop in the green. And then it'll just keep going up. And then I'll tell you guys, I nailed it. That's what most people do. Uh, but right now, as long as we keep making lower highs, I just there's just probably really nothing to worry about. I'll just keep on trucking. I'm not trading that trend line, but if that's like, there it is. We're headed south. I bought Amazon 3400 two years ago. How many years till I'm even? Oh no, uh, 3400. Well, this I can tell you some of my PR days. Amazon moved two hundred dollars, so we're two of those days away. You know how many days Amazon moves two hundred dollars? It's it's not unheard of. Uh, not that I need to sell you on that. How many shares did you buy? You at least get a hundred shares. Can you sell anything against it? I do have to get to how this affect bank stocks. Uh, ignore that channel down. <laughs> uh, as far as that goes, it's not looking good. Uh, pretty good example. We're bouncing out of the zone. It's a zone until not, right? Like that's where I'm a buyer. It's a bright yellow zone. It's yellow is the first color your brain even recognizes. There it is. I can't make it any easier. But what I can show off is that every time we have found buyers here, there's been fewer and fewer and fewer. So that looks like we're just creeping right on below. Like we're about to just break to the downside, which probably won't be good for your stocks like Bank of America. Uh, but I will say um, I am going to start looking for... Uh, I would for sure buy XLF right here. So I'm going to put an alert there. Uh, yeah, that hits I'm buying. In the meantime, I'll just watch it. Yeah, less buyers or there's more sellers. That is the name of the game. It will never not be the name of the game. More buyers it goes up, more sellers it goes down. Right? Whether it's a lack of one or the other or just a full force of one or the other, uh, that's what's going to move this market. And that's why I don't care about news. It's why I don't care about your opinion. Because everyone's opinion is right here on the charts. Right? You could love this thing. You could say all you want about it. Uh, I, I, I harp on this one a lot. People love PIN. PIN National. Uh, they love BABA. There's a lot of things that look just like this. And if you talk to anybody in PIN, they'll give you all the bullish reasons. Every one of them. All right? But uh, except the people that are actually moving money around whatever reason they have, it's not up. So they're selling it. So I just stick to that. Here's where everyone's, where here's the majority of opinion is down. All right, I do have to give me one second, pull up that tab real quick. So Amir, you had Intel. I forgot now that we got this. Uh, as it sits right now, I bet that's, so what I was saying last night in the in the, the member stream was I drew out these lines. This is typically when I draw these lines, it's an inside day, but I, I grabbed these two wicks. Here's our high, here's our previous low. Uh, the markets, like I said, were in that zone. Like this will probably lead the way. If if it stays down like where we're at, because the futures did sell off, uh, you know, let's make that a little bit wider. Uh, we stay down, that's probably gonna break to the south side. And I would be I would still be a buyer in this zone. 
but I would assume a lower high if that if that does bounce. Amazon needs to announce stock split for them to break even. Man, yeah, no kidding. News just makes the candles uh, move faster to the DZ or the SZ, demand zone or supply zone, where it was going anyway. Yeah, I agree. Laura, you're from Merlin, right? I see you on here, but welcome. What's up? Oh, here's a... Your whole show must be based on trading. No kidding. Uh, because if you're not buying stocks in the companies that are good when they're 30 to 50% off their highs, you're stupid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you're like a real detective, too. What part... Maybe you missed the beginning where I said, this is my trading account. Yeah. <laughs> uh... This guy's really, really passionate. Either you believe the market topped out, in which case you should sell everything, or just trade. Or you believe it'll go up, <laughs> go up, in which case you're stupid not to buy it lower. This guy loves a stupid word. I'm not talking trash. I'm just being honest. You should probably stick around a little bit longer. I'm glad you subscribed though. Uh, but yes, I, I, I'm a trader. I buy these these boxes. Uh, no, I don't care about anyone's. Um, hang on. Investing is about buying good companies at cheap prices, not worrying about whether or not the stock value fluctuates. Yes. If we were having an investing conversation, yes. Like right now, I'm invested in uh, uh, Facebook. <laughs> it's my biggest position. Uh, and it's, it's down. It's probably be down in, in the morning. Uh, but, again, bag holding is when you're a trader and then you decide to hold because it's down. Investing is you're buying good companies. How are the wheat futures? Probably, I would imagine, up. Of course, it's Warren Buffett talking, not myself. Uh, oh, okay. There's always good information on the show. I thought he was talking about investing, just not trading. My bad. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, the stupid, that is harsh. Uh, I'm trying not to use the word stupid. I've definitely used it about, a, about five million times on this show. Uh, but no, to be very clear, guys, I do have an investment account and I have a trading account. Trading's where it's charging the income, much like you guys have an income, and then you put it in your investment account because why would you have a savings account that's borderline asinine at this point? You're just losing money. Um, but that is a, a completely uh, different conversation. I'm pretty sure you aren't scared about Facebook because you probably have a high conviction. <laughs> high conviction. Uh, dang. Uh, I'm sorry. Got a crappy text. Mama says stupid is what stupid does. All right, you have to get to. Hang on, guys. I got a, I got a couple tickers to break down really quick uh, for the YouTube members. Uh, man, now I, now I feel like I need to do like an, an invest. Well, that's my other YouTube channel, which. By the way, we are going to start talking about investing on this one. Uh, I'll pull it up here for you. Give me one second. Uh, which is kind of dumb because trading is in the name. Um, but that's the one where I'm going to be... In, in this particular channel, I don't want it to be about just trading. I, the show is for trading. Uh, I'll be talking about what I do as a trader, and part of that is the, the investments that I do buy, so including real estate and uh, other stocks I do invest in. Uh, all right, so Uber. I'd be careful with this knife. I really would. Uh, sorry, my kid's losing her mind. Give me one second. So, if you guys want to know how, the, how crazy the real estate market is, the text I just got, uh, house listed at, at 220 our offer was 270 <laughs> and it still was the low ball offer. God, real estate is ridiculous right now. Let's 
Let's see. It's not solely an investor's mark right now, especially with the volatility. Eh. Volatility can give you cheap prices. Uh, volatility is great for a trader because movement is where money's made. Uh, that's why I don't care if it goes up or down. I just want to be part of the movement. As far as Uber goes, that will be very uh, pivotable. Uh, if it breaks that, when we're talking about discount prices, I would have no faith it didn't turn around anytime. I, I don't know why you would. I would just set the alert, trail that thing the whole way down. When the alert goes off, maybe check it out then. Uh, which I, I got to say, as far as Uber goes, the show Super Pumped just came out, and it's about the whole creation of Uber. Uh, one show came out. I'm instantly hooked on this thing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, but as far as investments go, Uber is something I will quite literally never invest in. Uh, for me to invest in something, I have to know, I have to truly believe it's going to be here in the next five years. If I buy something, I'm not looking at it. I don't care. I'm buying it now. I'll check it in five years. Uh, and, and Uber, like I just don't see why that's... It was, uh, what's the word Kathy Wood used to say? It's it's changing. You know, you know what I'm saying. You'll throw it up in the comments here in a second, too. Um, you know, I, as soon as the, the tax, you know, they took over the taxis. As soon as Elon, like, as soon as Tesla's driving themselves, like, you won't need Uber anymore. So, I don't know how they're going to adapt to that. Maybe I'll look into them when they say, hey, we're going to break away and do this or that. We're going to keep growing. You know, we don't want to be the next blockbuster, you know. Um, so maybe they change something that I would disruptive. Yeah, yeah, destroyed the uh, the taxi business. Uh, but the, a robo taxi is gonna come out and destroy their business. It's Trade Station better than TD Ameritrade. First of all, that's an opinion based question. And if you want my opinion, um, one would be like trading with sticks and dirt, like drawing little dirt signals in there in the middle of traffic while people are walking, kicking your little dirt lines around. And then the other one would be like a, uh, the highest end Mercedes vehicle right now. Like if that's, if that's how far apart trade station and TD Ameritrade are. Yes. If you want my opinion, trade station is a billion times better. Uh, yes, I am about to go over Tesla. Uh, as far as CrowdStrike, uh, Plenty of buyer stuff right here. So gap down, picked it up. Buyers have shown up here. Wherever this level is, they said, give me all the shares. Uh, and yeah, back here, that's where they sold everything. They said, get rid of all. It's not worth this much. Dump them. Let them all go. Find the nearest nerd that wants my shares and let them have it. Uh, now we got. Now this is where the retail crews will say, um, old resistance, new support. Um, so... Breaking that, not going to be good news. Probably willing to bet we head there. Now, what you'll see is it'll come back down. It might come up and retest this. At that point, I'd rather go short uh, and go zone to zone in that way. <laughs> I like my sticks and dirt drawings. All right, oracles. Uh, so, just like this. Came up, test from the bottom, selling off. Plenty of sellers there. And lower lows, lower highs. Why, why fight this trend? You got earnings. Looks like it's coming up on the 10th. Um, and, and guys, if, if maybe you're new here, uh, if you want my opinion on earnings, there's going to be announcements. It's going to go up or it's going to go down. That's it. Uh, that, 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 that's 100%. It. There's, have you ever asked yourself, why did they announce it? It was good, but it went down. Like There's always there's always the story that comes with it, the forward guidance. There's did they beat, were they expected to beat? Because they did beat, but they beat all of them. Like, you know, it's a, a gamble, right? It's a 50-50 bet. So your allocation, because I trade earnings, I don't, I don't mind. They're like the, the break of the monotony for me. But they are the same money I would go to the casino with. And I'm talking drinking alcohol and all. Like I, It's going to make me money or it's not. You know, it is not an income-based uh, strategy to be playing earnings. It might change your income uh, when you catch those runners, those home runs. Uh, but so will a slot machine jackpot. How many of those you got to be in to get one? Uh, until this proves otherwise. Uh, again, we can see back here. Kind of a little base right inside there. Uh, if that did bounce, I'd expect another lower high. And then that would just break. Uh, can't really talk about reversal. At least gets above that eighty-three dollar mark. 
Are you short this? Yo, yo, what did I miss? Nothing much. Thought we were going to get feisty. Someone was throwing the, the S word around. Stupid. I thought we were going to get in here and throw it down. Uh, but no. What do I think of shop? Will it get much lower? Uh, as it sits right now, future selling off. I haven't even tagged out, so I'm... Much more. Ooh, crap. Sorry. How much more am I up? Uh, if it's still above zero, it can still go lower. Um, hey, I'm going to move my stop up really quick. Oh, here's oil. Uh, the oil margin requirements are hilarious because they creep up every day. Um, just because I... Uh, hang on. I'm going to move my stop to 1968.90. Call it good. Uh, with lower volume, I don't want anything spiking up really quick, so that's why I'm trailing it much tighter. Uh, I am on the 15 minute time frame. Um, hang on, let's go to here. So I am just above this this green. So all I'm doing, guys, if you want to know what trade station looks like, like here was my stop, and then I just move it down, and then I move it down. Like so, that right now it's my stop, and as that breaks, let's say that's the wick, I'll just move it right down here, and then I'll just continue until it tags out. I don't want to be up all night curious about this thing all right uh weber give me just a few seconds guys let me get through these real quick uh weber like the grill uh so if i'm short i wouldn't necessarily like this so it's making lower highs i've mocked that and told you guys why are you buying if it's making lower highs it did stop making lower highs so what i don't like is it like this the sellers are losing momentum right here. Uh, so that's where I would be curious, like, hey, is there a buy? So here's that, again, the main source of attraction. Here's that main game of tug of war between buyers and sellers. It did dip down. They gobbled it right back up. Got They woke up again. Someone said, hey, it's below that level. Do you want some? Said, give me every share you got. Buy the order book. Uh, sent it up. Still plenty of sellers. Winnie the Pooh and his friends hanging out at that 1185 mark. So it needs to get above that. Uh, ultimately, before we talk about reversal, probably needs to get above 13. Uh, right now, I just wouldn't want it breaking that. Nothing too promising on it. Uh, it's a scalp at best. We're probably... I mean, if, if I was in this, I don't think I'd even want it going to that zone again. My stop, if I could be in the green... Yeah, my stop at right now, green or red, probably would be 1045. I think if we even test that again, we're just knocking on the door to kick it even lower. Sideways until not? Yeah. Does TradeStation allow you to tag out contracts that's not on futures overnight? Oh, uh, that'd be my very favorite broker. And if that were the case, I would never say that on YouTube. Uh, but no, that is it's not the case. That is not a broker thing. That is a United States thing. Like that's the whole asset class. Um, no, there's just futures overnight. There's forex futures and forex are open right now. Um, options and stocks uh, are just not. Uh, agriculture. This looks very uh, war funded right now. Um, whew, you're you're at the high stakes table. A little bit of a little bit of big greens, big reds. Uh, right now, I I would I would say we're probably on the track up. Uh, breaking that, the, the, no, I would not want it giving up Friday. Uh, 2145 would be my stop. Uh, if you could put it in the green at 2185, I would at least do that. But that one got a little, like, we're kind of just headed up. Gets a little spicy. Hopefully things calm back down and this can start trending up. But right now, seeing these cans, like, here's how this thing moves characteristically. Like, all right, a little bit up, a little bit down. Things clearly got out of whack over here. And that's what would have me saying, what's going on with this thing? Uh, oh, crypto, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll go over PayPal. Uh, could we see Tesla back at 420 or too ambitious? It's probably a little ambitious. Uh, could, yes. I'm a huge Tesla fan, and I would like to think I would own enough Tesla to not let it go to 420, but I also wouldn't mind buying it at that price either. Come on, where you at? Alex, 
CVBR, not a ticker. CVR. Uh, Did you maybe fat finger the B? No way you're calling that out. Uh, Alex, you here? Let me know. Uh, Alex, if you pop up, let me know. I'll, I'll break it down. Expect to move for Tesla. Let's do this. After that, let's kick it off. Let's answer a few questions for you guys. Uh, we'll do PayPal. Uh, where's the bottom after PayPal? So this is a weekly zone. My alert is right here at 9102. I'll check that. But right now, guys, lower lows, lower highs. Uh, so I'm sure we, we might get some sort of bounce here. Now that alert, I'll move it down here. Uh, just to let me know, like, hey, it's time. Like, clearly for that alert to go off, it would need a pretty decent green day or a few green days. So I'll worry about that then. Uh, but this is my alert. So I do have PayPal in the investment account. And I will add more on right here when this when this weekly alert hits. Um, below that, oh, man, that would be trouble. Now, what I won't say is this sell-off doesn't make sense. You know, there's... A lot of people love to say that oh, this doesn't make sense. This is a steal. Like it makes sense. There's more sellers than buyers. That's what makes sense, and it always will make sense. Uh, so don't kid yourself into just buying a knife, chopping a few fingers off, and then saying, "Well, I got ten, and don't worry, because if those go away, I still have my toes." Like at that point, you'll be selling a kidney later to try to average down. Um, good amount to start trading shares with. I would first say there's the free version of my YouTube and then the playlist on how to trade. And then I would, um, if, uh, a paper trade so you get to understand the the, uh, um, the software. On, I gotta get, and then, I don't know. Um, what is a good amount? A few thousand? The smaller your account is, uh, the more likely you are to fail. Uh, and unfortunately, it's just a sad truth. You're going to try to make moves that some bigger players do. You're going to be in a chat. And people just have more money. You're going to take different plays, plays you can't afford. You'll find out when your account is small like that, there's just plays you can't afford. It takes a lot off the table. For you to properly take some, some trades or even kind of take on any kind of risk at all that makes sense, uh, just having a $500 account uh, is, is not, not the best. I've been trading, just haven't done shares always, even options. Um, I don't know why, why. Just grow what you have now, then. You've been trading? Okay. All the people who bought 2022 leaps back in 2020 must be in the <laughs> grabber right now. They're probably not doing good. Um, this trade. Oh, hang on. Need 25000 to day trade, not be considered a pattern day trader. Yeah. Hopefully everyone here knows that. 174, you guys. Can you guys do me a solid real quick? Hit the thumbs up for me. You To chat in here, you do have to hit the subscribe button. Um, and then any questions you guys have. We got another 15 minutes. The rest is going to be answering questions and tickers. So don't be shy. Expect to move for Tesla 6214. Um... We can chart that out. We're just hanging out inside these moves. 6214. A little baby move. Or when do we end? The 11th? I'll say it's the 11th. Uh, just shy of that zone. Close enough. Now, guys, these are not support and resistance lines. These are where market makers are pricing in risk. Uh, again, options are what drive order flow. So we're squeezing this week up. Pricing a little bit more last week. It's interesting. Can we see this at 420, you said? Um, I would buy a lot at this, this bottom zone right here. 420. Um... Home. One more zone down. I, I probably wouldn't really have anything. If I was going to pay attention to anything, once this zone breaks, I will have an alert right here. We'll blue zone that up real quick. 
again, blue zones for me are speed bump zones. Like, yeah, it's worth checking out. Maybe if I was short, I would be managing it right there. Uh, and then right here, that's the explosive move up. I would care one more time at oh, the $400 mark. Oh, uh, that'd be wild to see it down there. Uh, but one thing I don't do on this channel is talk about anything for certain. We'll never see this. We'll see this or that. And like, uh, no. If you've been in the markets long enough, you, there's always a, a curveball that can come out of nowhere. Something's always come out of left field. There's just some things you've never seen before that are just going to happen. That's why I still call you brand new if you've only been trading for a couple of years. And, and sorry, but I don't want to talk bad. But when I talk about other YouTubers, most of them started trading in 2019 or, or 2020. You guys know the big one. He did a bunch of real estate, and all of a sudden, YouTube got some some views and stocks, and all of a sudden, he's a stock trader, and then everyone gets all weird when he sells his position. Uh, the highest strike and the lowest strike? What do you mean? Highest strike price and the lowest strike price? No. For Tesla, the if, if market markers are pricing in less movement, would it be profitable to sell a put or sell a call? Uh, you do need to be directionally right, and uh, I would probably. The thing is with Tesla, what I don't like doing is selling anything close to the money on tickers that have a cult following. Tesla, it used to be Tesla and Netflix. If you want to get steamrolled, then you would sell an options contract uh, on one of those. Now I, I, I'll sell you guys the the, the four hundred strike put on Tesla all day long. I'll make that. I'll make sure that order fills uh, every weekly for four hundred for a while. I, I would. Um, but anything remotely close to that level, uh, I, I wouldn't. What has me, the only reason I care about expected moves being small on Tesla is we know Tesla can move. So once it goes to start stretching its legs, uh, then market makers do need to start accounting for um, options contracts that were out of the money that are no longer out of the money or even closer. You know, when they start delta hedging, it's not a one to one. There's an algorithm for it. As it gets closer, they do need to start pricing in and grabbing shares which leads it to uh, the quick squeezes you see as it goes from one standard deviation to two. Uh, let's see. Is AMC a dead meme at this point? Oh, we're still talking about AMC, huh? Is that, do I still have any, uh, are there still any apes following me right now? Are there any, is there anybody still, no, this is your, I'm not gonna make fun of you. I've definitely made fun of a lot of them. Uh, and, I, and I do wish, I actually heard some people's feelings on that. And, and they're just now talking to me again. And they're still in AMC. And it's kind of one of those, like, what I said was making sense, but my delivery was a little bit harsh. Um, so I'm a thousand percent aware of that. But are there any apes in here? Because no, it's, it's, it's not looking good, especially if it breaks this. this was that 16 bucks? Uh, I personally thought AMC was a $20 stock as an investment. Um, but, uh, as far as the mother of all squeezes, the movement, all that, uh, no, I think it would be, uh, done. Um, uh, what match made in heaven, Russian, uh, convoys, uh, on cheap Chinese tires? Oh, the expected move? Uh, no, that is, um, picked up from all of the, all the options being bought and sold. I am human. <laughs> Do you think 719 is possible by tomorrow? We're talking about Tesla? Uh, that would be quite the dive. Uh, is it possible? Yes. Uh, did you go out and buy some seven? You need that by tomorrow? What options contracts are you in? Um... Any thoughts on wheat for tomorrow? Uh, what are the wheat futures? Uh, what's the letters on there? Uh, uh, I'm an ape strong on AMC. Shorted above 40 only to penny stock land. Uh, I'll just have a surprise, James. That's why I started laughing even reading that comment. Like, you could be uh, anything. Um, let's see. I wouldn't mind Don showing his mindset on growing a small account uh, video for the Don Front Trading Channel. Um, 
I wouldn't, I can do it. So I grew my account from 200 bucks. But when I did it, the market was different. Uh, like it was way more forgiving. And all I had to do was buy. I mean, it was going up. Uh, doing it now in this market would be a little bit more challenging. You have to have some some capital to, to play the games in this in this market right now. What's the lowest, in your opinion, this market can go? Uh, zero. Uh, I know there's wheat, but I mean, like, uh, that's the wheat fund. What are the wheat futures? Hang on, I'll find it real quick on TradeStation. Oh, I'm not in any options contracts, just heavily. Did you shorted the stock? Okay. I bet my friend that if AMC hit 300 any time in 2021, I'd pay him his amount of shares at that level. If not, he owed me a bottle of Blue Label. <laughs> Still haven't seen that bottle yet. Um, give me one second. Ooh, should I move my stop up again? Uh, give me one second real quick before we, uh, we're in that zone now. Um, uh, hang on. I'm just trying to squeeze every little penny out of this thing, I guess. I'm going to put my stop just above this wick right now that we have. The candle's about done. Uh, it's, so it's at 1965.10. Let me update that. All right. Uh, again, I was short that from Friday. So it, it's, it's up quite a bit. Uh, how can we find simple... Uh, who knows the wheat? F oh, ZW. Is that it? Um, ZW. Let me probably type it up here. Wheat futures, yeah. Oh, it's just nothing. ZW. Hang on, I'm trying to find uh, what month are we in? Hang on, is there a uh, H? ZWH twenty two. Here we go. Uh, the H is the month, by so that's your wheat futures. Uh, and then, so if you're looking on on your broker, you'll see a ZWH22. This one says 2022. Uh, still up there. I kind of I don't want to short it yet, but these are all on my watch list. I'm putting it there now. Uh, same with oil. Uh, this won't last forever. It will be a quick spike down. It keeps limiting up. Yeah, I'd be careful if you guys are in anything like this, for sure. Why can I not? I'll have to find it on trade station later. For some reason, ZW's not pulling up. I think the most expensive is green label. Oh. Once you buy, war will be over and it comes crashing down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so when I see trades like this, I don't get FOMO. I don't want to just jump in. Uh, the easy money's already been made, and I like making easy money. Uh, so if I miss the train, I miss the train. Chasing it right now, uh, you might be the one person that gets their order filled right here. Uh, and then you're instantly right back down. Commodities go vertical up and vertical down. Yeah, and that's why I also... So I've been saying this for uh, the probably past few days. Uh, I do want to short oil uh that's not today it's not tomorrow uh it, it's it's gonna be a little bit but yeah i know i don't think oil is gonna stay up here they're gonna come out and say mini wheat is xw you guys rock hang on on trade station 
or at W on Trade Station. I will say trade. There it is. Weeds continue. Thank you for that. But no Z. So TOS is probably Z. Trade Station's futures tickers are weird. It has to do with when they were trading that we used to call it the cave. Uh, and futures on Trade Station kept their old name. Let's go with H. Man. How much is a contract? One contract's 4900 bucks. Oh, that is a... I oh, wouldn't forget about this alert. Yeah. Uh, man, if you guys want to... The whole war thing is... It affects supply and demand. Uh, that's the narrative at least being ran. They can We can start making more oil. Uh, and that is probably going to be right around the corner. Uh, but who, who am I to tell you that that's right around the corner? That's Now we're getting to some, some spicy trades. And the last thing I want is you to think, well, Don said this. You take that to heart. And then, yeah, this thing goes to 300. You know, or, or you go long because more green candles than red. And then, boom, we get that sharp move down. I would be very careful trading these right now. Uh, but I do trade oil futures. I do not trade the oil ETFs just for that reason. There's a lot of movement that happens overnight. Uh, let's see. Vale did is it valet or veil? Vale? Very good the past few months. Yeah, that's worth trucking. Uh, if I was in this, I'd have to put my stop at least at. Uh, if that gapped up in the morning, 1985 or 1945, it didn't. Don said 300 on a well. <laughs> Hard to hear first. Somebody did ask about AMD. Uh, my fill just filled on IWM. Is it time to buy? Should we switch the gears right now and just talk about buying this stuff? Uh, hang on. You said long or short AMD or NVIDIA. Was that not the question? How long does wheat last if trade if a trader took delivery asking for a prepper? Uh, I don't know. Um, that'd be funny. Shorted the micro crude at one twenty nine out too early. Nice. Uh, I played the micro futures in a lot of things. I yeah lately I've been when the markets gets choppy like this like swinging shares. Like, uh, every one of my intros is almost just about to be, like, uh, on the next episode of making the YouTuber look dumb. Swing trading just is not, uh, it, it's going to gap up or gap down in the morning. It, it's kind of hard to get a beat. And then when it gaps somewhere, does it gap and go? Does it gap and crap? Uh, the four-hour time frame just getting chopped up and just beat to crap. And by the time there is any trend, it turns around. Uh, so day trading or like on the weekly has been better lately. And when the markets get like that, I do trade more futures because I can just manage it and not have to worry about that swing like that. Uh, so AMD and NVIDIA selling calls against them. Yeah, I was short AMD last week, uh, which panned out. Uh, I would rather short NVIDIA if that zone breaks, though. See, uh, the Russell's just now scraping the zone. Yeah, I just moved my stop up right behind it, though. Wheat and corn futures just opened. Looks like a limit up. <laughs> Talk about wild. Um, I've learned my FOMO lesson, like what you said. I I have patience and then couldn't enter the trade and immediately went down. Yeah, I, most of these things I'm talking, I'm speaking from experience. I, I've made, stu even though the market was forgiving when I was in there, it's still kind of the same same game. I would get in thinking this thing's going to the moon. I would look at a green candle and instantly think, I would first of all, first of all, completely ignore the fact that it's already up a thousand percent. And in my head, I'm thinking it's going to go to the next thousand percent. Like why not? Uh, and then yeah, I would just instantly be red. I'm like, well, that was stupid. It's always like when you look back, you're like, what was I thinking? And I don't like repeating mistakes. Uh, so uh, it only took a couple times for me to be like, well, that was dumb. Gonna wait. Especially when you think there's over 7,000 tickers. If you want to worry about FOMO, go look at every one of those tickers. 
Yeah, because there's always one moving thousands of percent a day. There's the, and if you want to be like, well, that's the penny stocks, then go to a smaller one. Still moved hundreds of percent. Still move a hundred percent, fifty percent. You missed the move on a lot of things. You just aren't. You don't have any FOMO because you don't know it existed. That's all. AMD is coming to a key level one hundred. It'll fall if Nvidia is going down. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, chips probably won't do well. Uh, if you bought here, I I probably will buy right here. Um, the second we bounce out, I put my stop in the green though, and take that risk off the table because I'm probably gonna assume another lower high. All of you new to futures, be careful. You can get hammered fast. Yes, uh, and I do. I, so I'm gonna start making futures videos for you guys because that's that's been coming up a lot in my mentorship lately. Uh, and that kind of leads to a lot of questions. Uh, but something we've definitely been talking about a lot as far as futures go is, yes, they trade around the clock. You can trade at 1 a.m. if you want. The volume just isn't there. Uh, and then another important thing is make check all of your orders before you go to sleep. Because if you had an OCO bracket, right, so you bought here, and you had a sell order here and a sell order here. One was a stop loss, one was a take profit. Both of them are sell orders. If a bug happens where it fills and the other one stays there, what you'll end up doing is, It'll stop out, go up, tag you short in an uptrend, and then full send, and you'll wake up to an invoice. Like, yeah, hopefully they closed your account, but if crazy things happen, you didn't just lose your account, you owe them money. Like, there's always a heads and tails to every scenario. There is never just a golden gate, uh, this is the best thing ever. Uh, I would, I'd say you said get your feet with micros. Yeah, uh, but I wouldn't even care about that. It's, it's all the same. When you're looking at futures, it is a leveraged aspect, and uh, some people think they can spend the same and they'll make so much more, but look at it in a different light. Say, I could spend so much less and make the same amount. Like, that That way, everything's good. Don't, get, don't let your eyes get too big, and then you just get destroyed. You can only lose your butt if you put it out there. Are you in any small caps? Uh, I was short the Russell, and it just tagged out on this stream. Over 100 likes. What's happening, guys? I just shorted oil and posted the uh, the chart play on Discord. What do you think? Chowski, that is a mentorship question, which we got to get into, but I will... Uh, let's do it right now. Just took a short in oil. Let's see. You're in the oil futures. You shorted it right there, huh? Uh, your stop's above... First of all, are you? is that a paper account? Because in an oil's future, if you went short right here, uh, and your stop is right here, that's a lot of movement. Even one micro, that is still, that's still a few hundred dollars. That's a lot. Any other nine-year-old here other than me? Uh, no, I'm going to assume not. You're nine years old? You, uh, you play in a really cool game called the stock market? It's real. Uh, did, did you calculate your risk? Because, uh, yes, uh, if that snaps down, that will be a very profitable trade. Uh, that's some risk right there. I, I just don't know your account size when you say here on YouTube. Um, you know the risk going, especially something like oil. Ugh. Everyone loves to think it's overbought, short it, it's oversold, buy it. Uh, and I gotta say, I make a whole lot of money just going with the trend that's already there. And when it turns, I tag off with a small loss and then I go that direction. Um, uh, risking 1k. Okay. At least, you know, that's what, what you got at risk. Yeah. Uh, put your stop in the green. When it, when it does get in the green, I put my stop in the green. Don't let that, don't just lose 1k cause you're only up a hundred bucks. Like put your stop in the green 50 bucks when it's up there and then, uh, and then let it roll. Um, so I do have to hop off here. Uh, if you guys do, or if you guys are ever curious, yes, I do have a mentorship where I go live. And I'm about to go live with them right now. Every night before the stock market opens, uh, there's also the chat that I'm in, um, all of that, everything. It is the teachable link down below. If you buy that, it's lifetime access to everything I will ever put out. Um, so first of all, the subscribe button is free. Hit that, hit the bell so you know when I go live, which is going to be... Uh, right now it's Sundays and Wednesdays, uh, but let me ask you guys something. And if you're watching this recording, if you're if you're live right now, post this once it re-uploads. Uh, I don't want your answer in here. 
Do you want me to change the Wednesday show to Tuesday? Would that get you some more? Because we, on Wednesday we talk about Thursday, and then there's just not much Friday. But maybe we let... Uh, I, I like Tuesdays. Monday gives you uh, some craziness. Tuesday gives you direction. Uh, so I'm thinking about changing it up from Sundays and Wednesdays to Sundays and Tuesdays. Um, so we might be trying that. But anyway, let me know. If everyone just says Tuesday, let's do this, we'll do Tuesday. So make sure you hit the, the bell and you get notified when I go live. Because the sole purpose of me being here is literally to answer you guys' questions and talk to you. It's not because I like sitting in a room, talking to myself, pretending I have friends somewhere out there in the world. Uh, but I've called you guys stupid so much and you're still here. I hope you guys understand how awesome that is and how much I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's see, whichever has more YouTube traffic. Uh, I don't think it matters. I think it's, it's going to be the channel. The channel that matters. Tuesday. All right. Anyway, let me know. I'm going to vote all those comments down below. And, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a poll right now on Twitter. I have like 30 people that follow me on Twitter. I'm kind of famous. Uh, it's still Don Francho. Um, so follow me on Twitter because I'm about to do a poll. Probably called me stupid the most. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys next video. Mentorship.